So I got up while Sloan was sleeping and showered, brushed my teeth, did my hair, got dressed. Which, oh lord, here, here. Are you done? Which doesn't happen every day. <laughs> So I'm glad that I was able to do it today. So like I said, that doesn't always happen. Some days I never brush my teeth. Some days I never get dressed. Lord. Or take a shower. So um, She started sleeping on her stomach. And she sleeps longer like that. So I was able to um, hurry up and get a shower. So. Yes. Good morning. Say good morning, Sloan. Watch, she spits up or something. Say good morning, Sloan. No? Okay. <laughs> Sloan's sleeping. She went to sleep like... She's been like sleep off and on for like an hour. But I just laid her down. I was holding her and I was catching up on the shy. If you guys watch the shy, um, it's so good. I literally binged it. I think after I had her, I binged like all the seasons. But this is her sleeping. I don't know what I'm gonna eat for lunch. I'm making my lunch. It's like a pasta that I make. This is the end result. I'm gonna put the um, recipe in the description box below. But usually I would use shrimp. I just wanted something different this time instead of salmon and cook it in the pasta and put Parmesan on top. And I've also done it with crushed peppers in it, but I didn't use any crushed peppers this time because I don't have any. So I'm like, I'm super obsessed with these little outfits. I get them from I get them from a place well two different companies sell them so Posh Peanut and Little Bum Bums and so I just got her two more outfits. These are both three to six months so she can't wear them yet. I know, you got more clothes. But look how cute, literally I can't even take it. Look how cute these are. And it comes with a little matching headband. So I got her this one. And And I don't just get her with a little headband. So there, so this is the little headband that comes with this um, like sleeper. But um, they have like a biggie bow that's like super huge. Um, and they're all sold out. So I haven't been able to get her one. I, I cannot wait to see how they look on her. But I don't only get her like girly ones. I'm going to try and put in a picture. She has a dinosaur set. So freaking cute. And that one's from um, Posh Peanut. And I always want her to have a headband. I mean, she doesn't always wear a headband. But I feel like with these sleepers, it's so freaking cute with the headband. Um, and they had a dinosaur headband. Even though the sleeper was so sold and marketed for boys um but it was so cute i have that one the first one that she ever wore was from posh peanut it was like black with like these like palm palm leaves palm tree leaves or something on them and that didn't come with a headband but i wish it did i want to get her a black one like an all black one um and they have which one i feel like there's another one from little bum bums that i want but i haven't been able to get Um, and then what else? I think this is her little mushroom thing. Yeah. So apparently these are like 
all the craze or all the rave. I don't know which one people said. But yeah, so it's supposed to mimic like um, the breast, which is weird because I wonder how soft this is. But yeah, so we'll see how she likes it. I'm going to wash it off and see if she likes it. You don't have to cry. Do you like it? Yes? So I checked my mail and I got the keepsake from my cryo bank or sperm bank for the donor that I used. So once you report your pregnancy, you get like a little keepsake, at least <clears throat> from California Cryobank. And it looks like this. And it has all of the donor information on a USB so you can share with your kids one day. Um, yeah, so this should have all of his health history, his family's health history. They do like a genetic test, like DNA test to say, or see where his um, ancestry is. What else does that have? It'll have like um, his interview that he did with the cryobank. They do like this little interview where they'll ask them questions and the donor will answer the questions. And I think it's so that we can hear their voice. I don't know. Um, I actually did use that to determine whether I did or did not want to use a certain donor. So, um, initially I was looking at a donor at Seattle Sperm Bank. And when I listened to his, like, interview or little essay or whatever it's called, he just seemed really immature. And not like someone I could hold a conversation with. The donor that I chose, he seemed... I don't know how to describe it. Like I could have a conversation with him if I met him somewhere. Even if it was if it even if it was just like in line at the grocery store, like he seemed like he would be aware of like current events and like what's going on in the world. Whereas the other one, he just seemed like almost like a kid. And this guy is young too. Um they're probably about the same age. But I want to discuss like how to choose a sperm donor. So some of the things I'm recording on my phone and I'll look on my laptop. So some of the things that go into choosing a sperm donor, some of the things that I thought were important in choosing a sperm donor, I knew I wanted a black donor. Um, and then I also knew that Excuse me. I knew that um, I didn't want to have to sign. You have to like sign this waiver if the donor has a genetic disorder. There's like all these disorders out there. There's one that's like maple colored pee or maple smelling pee or something like that. I don't know. But anyway, so um, there's like all these genetic disorders and they're tested for all these hundreds of disorders and I didn't want to have to sign on any of them, sign the waiver. I also didn't want my donor to have sickle cell or like sickle cell trait, which I think is like one, some form of it, I don't know. Um, alpha thalassemia is another one that I was weeding out. Pretty much anything that you had to sign off on, but those were like the major ones that I was looking at. And I actually had a donor, so you can like favorite them. And I had a donor that I thought was so adorable as a kid. And like adult photos were not important to me. I did want to see um, childhood photos, but I felt like I could find the donor if I wanted to and see what they look like today. And I actually found my donor and I found another um, pretty popular donor um, from California Cryobank. And I've noticed like, 
they start talking about themselves and they're probably really proud of like some of their accomplishments so they start talking about those accomplishments even if they don't give like names of tournaments they were in or names of games they played it's like well what game takes place on on like this time frame or something like that like you can kind of figure it out and that's what I did to figure out who my donor was as well as the other popular donor um but what was I saying I forgot what I was saying but yeah so genetic disorders damn it what was I saying oh that's what I was saying I had a donor I had a donor that I really liked that I had favorited and you can it's almost like dating and so you can favorite your donor and um, it just makes it easier when you go back to the website that you can hurry up and go to that donor you can check their vial count stuff like that so I had a donor that I favorited but clearly I did not choose to purchase that donor and I did not know how hard it was to um, get a black donor so again he was just favorited I did not purchase anything and then one day early 2020 I like randomly go on and I'm like, oh my gosh, this little boy is so cute. He was like so freaking adorable. So cute. Um, and his vial count said low vial count. So I'm like, what the heck? This is the first, like, and I had been looking for like at least a few weeks, if not months. Um, and I'm like, how have I never seen this person before? Like, because if if he has a low vial count that means that he's been there at least in my opinion for a while which is not true um because people were buying them out so what i did not know like i was not i i had just like dunked my toe or like dipped my toe into the um entire single mom by choice donor sperm donor conception world and so i didn't realize like when you find a donor you need to get him now especially black donors like they're just hard to come by so um when i saw him i like called my mom I'm like it says low vial count i think i should call california cryobank and see if or see how many vials he has and so I called California Cryobank and the agent, they're like so nice and so personable. Um, she was like, he has eight vials. So I'm like, oh, okay, I'll call back tomorrow um, when I make up my mind. She's like, I think that you should at least put um, some vials on hold. And so I, I asked like, how much do I have to pay or like do I have to pay anything to put them on hold I'm not really sure if I want them like I didn't know if you could, you had to like pay like a deposit and then if you didn't want them like they kept your deposit like I wasn't sure about any of that so she said no it's a free hold it's 24 hours just call us back tomorrow and let us know if you don't call us back I think I think they like put them back to be sold or purchased by someone else if you don't call them so I put two vials on hold of the eight and called back the next day and purchased both two vials. Um, the other six were gone, they were sold out. And there were people on a waiting list. So if you find a donor that you like, you can join the waiting list. Then when he has another release, you're contacted to purchase that, the sperm, the vials. And it's like, I was not on the waiting list. <laughs> I was not notified. I just randomly went on and that's how I knew like, oh no, this was meant to be because what the heck. I could have literally, if I went on the next day, they wouldn't have been there. So the fact that I just went, I'm just like walking in my house like, let me look at California Cryobank again. So that's pretty much how I chose my donor. Again, no health issues. And that's what I looked for. So I looked, I was like, oh, he's so cute. And then I went like, okay, let's look at his health issues. But when you click on the profile, immediately when you click on the profile, it'll tell you whether there's, it'll say like sign form. And that lets you know that there's something that you have to sign and say that you acknowledge and you're okay with the risk that could come along with um, using this sample. And he didn't have that. So I'm like, perfect. Then um, I kind of like read through his profile I really liked he played a sport that I said that I wanted my kids to play so I'm like wait a minute what the heck you know so other things that you can 
um, like, I don't know what it's called. Select, I guess, when choosing a donor is like education level, um, what they studied in school. So like subject that they studied. Um, you can do height, you can do background or ethnicity, you can do, oh, you can do whether they've had a pregnancy before, which was not important to me. So, um, and I guess a testament to how that wasn't, uh, at least just for me, how it wasn't even close to being important was, um, so California Cryobank has a bulletin board where you can like pretty much message and like communicate with other people who have also purchased from California Cryobank. And so that's pretty much how you meet people who use the same donor as you, people who are interested in the same donor as you, etc. Um and someone mentioned how the donor that I used, they were going to sell the vials back to California Cryobank because they I think they had three embryos and all three ended up not making it to like day five or something like that. But I used, like I said, I used the same donor and I had um, 18 embryos make it to day five. And then of those 18 embryos, they, they were sent for PGS testing, which will um, determine whether they have um, chromosomal abnormalities. So like trisomies like uh, Down syndrome and of the 18, three had um, some type of disorder, a chromosomal abnormality and 15 were PGS normal. So I have 15, em well 14 embryos because number seven is sitting right there. But um, yeah. Uh, so I don't think that pregnancy should be a huge factor. At least it wasn't for me. I know some people really want that reassurance that the sperm will work, but, um, like the egg and the sperm are both important, you know? So, so height, eye color, hair color, hair texture, whether they have adult photos or not, blood type, donor type, vial type. Vial type is like um, IUI, which is washed sperm, ICI, which is unwashed sperm, or IVF, which is just like a smaller, I think you get two smaller vials. They just have less sperm in them because you don't need as much for an IVF cycle as you would for um, an IUI. CMV status, genetic testing, education level, areas of study, ethnic origin, ancestry, which is self-reported, DNA ancestry, which is like a blood test, religion, Jewish an ancestry, um, celebrity lookalikes, and if they're like international, so UK compliant, Canada compliant, and Australia compliant. It's so funny because my donor, when I found him, like in real life today, he looks nothing like what the um his celebrity look like is so if the donor doesn't have adult photos then they will tell you a celebrity look like they'll tell you two celebrity lookalikes my donor doesn't look like the celebrity look like at all i think it's hilarious though okay so they have subscription levels level one two and three level one is i don't know how much it costs I know level three is expensive, it's 250. But level one is genetic test summary, donor profile, medical history, DNA ancestry, donor personal essay, and staff impressions. So the staff impression is like when they came into the office, how did the staff um, view them? Like they'll say, oh, he had like curly hair and nice glasses. He was always well dressed and smelled nice or something like that. Um, and then your level two subscription includes everything from level one plus the extended donor profile which I believe is his family history, childhood photos, adult photos, if available, express yourself, donor keepsake with reported pregnancy. So that's how I got my donor keepsake is because I had the level three um, subscription. If you, ha if you ever get 
the level two or level three subscription, um, whether it's active or not at the time that you report your pregnancy, then you'll get the keepsake. Um, and then level three is everything from level one and two, along with facial features report, donor conversation, Kiersey report, and Kiersey Q&A. So the Kiersey report and Q&A is like a personality test. And then the facial features report is like, if so say like it was Will Smith it was my donor, then they would say like large ears or um, I don't know, like a long nose or something like that. Um, how high your eyebrows are and stuff like that. So kind of so you can get a picture of what the donor looks like or what your child might look like. Um, and I will say some of the donors are have no photos no photos at all so you could have an anonymous donor absolutely no photos the thing with anonymous donors is though um stuff like 23andme and ancestry.com no one's really anonymous anymore like um she could get her dna tested and find her donor if she wanted to i hope she doesn't um just because he agreed to contact at 18 and not before that so it's like just respect their wishes that's what they agreed to that's what they're open to you know let's look at how much um these vials cost because they've gone up 2021 they went up so 2020 they were a completely different price so we'll go by donor type yeah so anonymous donors looks like Each vial is $945. Open donors looks like their vials are $945. And let's see. Open ID donors. Are $1,045 so I'll tell you the difference between each donor because they do like a little write-up I'll do quick anonymous donors have not agreed to any contact with offspring but have not ruled out possible anonymous interaction in the future upon reaching the age of 18 any offspring may request additional information about his or her donor cryobank will make all reasonable efforts to supply this information either from our records or by attempting to contact the donor on the offspring behalf neither a parent or recipient nor donor may initiate any contacts upon reaching the age of 18 any offspring may also request that cryobank attempt to facilitate contact between themselves and their donor what well, at least that's good because i didn't even know that was possible open donors open donors have agreed to a minimum of one communication with any offspring once he or she turns 18 and there's more so when i um put it in the video you can read it ID disclosure donors have agreed to allow California Cryobank to release their identifying information to any offspring once they turn 18. This information may include donor's full name, donation location, last known address, or email. So yeah, I have an ID disclosure donor. I wanted my children to be able to contact their biological father when they turned 18 if that's what they wanted. Um, I'm a single mom by choice because I don't want to be with someone to have kids. That's not to say that they can't know like the other half of their DNA, you know. Okay, so I'm going to talk about how I found my donor. So, first off, let me say the FBI should hire me. But second, <laughs> so, um, I, so I had met a girl that purchased vials from the same donor we met on the um, California cryobanks bulletin board and um, I told her we were like texting each other and I told her I'm like I really need to find this guy in real life you know and so she's like yeah I know I've been looking I can't find him blah 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 and this is like in the beginning of my pregnancy. I think I might have been at the end of my first trimester or early second trimester. And so let's just say before we go any further, hormones were like through the roof, okay? So 
And it's like late at night, but she's on the West Coast. So it was like earlier in the day for her, but it was late at night for me. So I'm like, okay, well, I'm going to just buckle down and find him tonight. Even though I'd been looking and I couldn't find him. But I knew that I could find him because he talked too much about like what his parents did. He talked too much about the sport he plays. Um, about moves um, within like the country or stuff like that. It's like, I'm going to find him, you know. So I literally looked at every single roster wait okay so when you play like a a college sport you play like d1 d2 or like there's like divisions you know so what i did was for the sport that he played i googled which schools have the division that he played in because he talked about what division he played in so then of those schools i looked at the men's team for that sport for every year that he should have been in college so, um, and they don't tell you when he went to college. They just tell you like, um, so on the application, it's like almost like, um, how, do, how should I say it? It's, um, like a scanned document of stuff that has been written in on an application. Um, I guess some of them are like that. I don't remember if his was like that, but some of them are like that. And at the top, it'll say like their birth year. And so I knew based on that, what years he should be in college. And so with that information, I looked at like all the rosters from there, what he said about his family in his donor profile, he said about his family in his, um, like athlete write up or whatever, like the little profile that they do in college or whatever. And so I'm like, what the heck? Like I found my donor, you know, and I found his mom, I found his dad. I found his siblings, like, and I don't know. So, okay, so like I said, he's an ID disclosure donor. So I don't know if he said, I'm open to contact when they turn 18 or like them knowing all my information. So let's just keep my Facebook open. Because when I say there's like no privacy settings on his parents' Facebooks, on his Facebooks, it just makes me curious. But again, I don't even care to reach out to him. I think that it's something like nice to show my kids eventually. Um, and on the USB that California Cryobank gave me, I don't mind like saving photos. Um, I shared this information with other moms that use the same donor. We have like this Facebook group um, with all the donor siblings. And I shared the information with those moms. Well, some of them. Like some of them I've grown like closer to and I've shared with them. Um, a couple I have not really spoken to one-on-one. -on -one, but, um, and so I haven't shared with them. But I mean, it's no secret. But uh, yeah, I, th I just thought it was so funny. Like, wait a minute. First off, uh, the FBI needs to call me. <laughs> but yeah, so found my donor. He does not look the way I thought he would look, but I'm still happy I chose him. It's so funny because Sloane is the only one of her siblings that looks the way she does. So she's darker than all her siblings. And the donor, like I said, is um, biracial. I don't know if I mentioned that before, but it's funny because as an adult, her color makes sense. But if you only see his like childhood photos, you'd be like, wait a minute, what? And actually I have another funny story. So I wanted to know what her blood type was when she was born because I had her at home. And I don't even know if they test their blood types in the hospital, but I wanted to know. So I know my blood type and I know the donor's blood type. Well, based on what the donor's blood type was, I looked at a chart to see what the possibilities for her blood type could be. Um, and so I tested her blood and it came up as a blood type that was not possible with our blood types. I freaked out like I could barely breathe. Um, and my mom was just like, calm down, calm down. I'm like, I can't calm down. I don't know who her biological father is, blah, blah, blah. And I'm sure people are like watching this video like, you don't know who her biological father is anyway. 
but it's like you lose like that camaraderie with the other donor siblings like I really hope that she grows up and like knows her donor siblings and if she chooses to like build like closer relationships with certain ones over others then like that's just her choice but I don't want to take that away that like her knowing her donor sibling so I literally freaked out so I had to go back to his donor profile and look at his blood type again and I realized that I had remembered it wrong so with the his actual blood type and my blood type her blood type makes sense so it's just like what the heck I was like freaking out Let me know if you guys have any questions about known donors um, or not known donors I don't know nothing about known donors <laughs> let me know if you guys have a question about um, donors like on California cryobank or just like working with that company um that's who I got my uh vials from so